All right, ladies and gentlemen, and now we're back in business with a community showdown between the dwarves and the lizard men. So it's going to be permaban versus a rubber duck of war. And guys, we are here with a very exciting and degenerate dwarven build, which I am very excited to see in action. So it is going to be the dreaded quad gyro bomber. I don't think I've ever actually had this on the channel. I know there's been videos with two or three gyro bombers back in the day, but four has got to be a record. So uh, yeah, this should be quite a bit of fun. So gyro bombers, despite the fact that it says 29 ammunition, their miniguns shoot multiple shots at a time and they run out of ammo very quickly. They've always had really, really strong range DPS. If they can sit and shoot, it's really, really powerful. But the downside being is that they run out of ammo. So it's like, all right, you know, it, it's powerful and whatnot, but you're going to run out quick. And then from there, they're really dependent on excellent micro to get those bombardments right to really pay for themselves but now that the dwarves have had their nice little rework in a way and master engineers do have the restock ability we're looking at a pretty powerful combo and i do think that in a multitude of matchups in which dwarves don't have to worry about uh aerial pressure i think we could actually be seeing builds where you see dwarven boxes gyro bombers backed up by master engineers restocking their ammo with like an iron breaker box i do think that is something that we could actually see in play now, I don't think we're going to be seeing four gyro bombers. I think in actual tournaments, four gyro bombers is like not even allowed. But this is like a ladder game, so it's just all fun. But um, yeah, wild, wild stuff for sure. So it's going to be Thoric on his anvil. Thoric, I think, is hands down the most powerful dwarf lord. He's great in combat. His runes are excellent. His uh, AoE uh, horn, which is pretty much the same as the horn that Imric has, is very, very strong. I think it's the Rune of Doom. Yeah, it causes fear. Yeah, I think Imric's horn does the, the exact same thing. But the cooldown is pretty short on it. It gets in there and, uh, yeah, it's very, very powerful. So we got two cannons as well, a couple dwarf warriors on the ground. But, you know, there's only one thing we need to focus on here, and it is going to be the gyro bombers. Now, for a rubber duck here, he does have the quaddle. On top of that, the red crested skin chief and an ancient salamander. So a little bit of anti-air here. But aside from that, not too much anti-air, which is going to be very, very tough. The rest of the army is Saurus warriors with the red crested skinks for armor piercing, feral cold ones, razor dons. And in the flank, we got some chameleon stalkers, which I like quite a bit. I think the chameleon stalker vanguard has some nice applications against dwarves because uh, the precursor ammunition plus the stalkers just baseline, you know, functionality seems to be pretty good against slayers, right? So you run into slayers, you drop the precursor ammo, bring them down to like 70%, and then the slayers have to fight against a somewhat tanky unit with high melee defense. And yeah, the slayers will eventually win, but in terms of just like a value trade, I feel like it's not the worst thing in the world. So yeah, this is a very, very nasty de degenerate dwarven build, but it's going to be super fun to watch for sure. So the Skyhammer and the Gyro Bombers, look at the miniguns just blasting in there as the Ancient Salamanders try and run. There is some anti-air from the uh, auto attacks on the Howda here on the Red Crested Skink Chief. And the, the Mighty Quaddle is going to be doing its best to hunt these bad boys down. But a uh, good micro here from the Dwarven player, just kind of scattering whichever one you chase, you pull back. And also the miniguns have a suppression mechanic, which is so good. So it actually slows the Quaddle and it is getting punished so badly. Looks like the Quaddle might actually be able to catch one of the Gyrocopters here as this one turns around to shoot. Very much reminds me of like StarCraft, for example, when you have a bunch of, uh, you know, Mutalisks or Vikings for Terran and uh, you're having to like kite one big powerful piece, right? So the Quaddle trying to chase the Lizard Army doing the, pretty much the best thing it can by rapidly advancing on the Dwarven Force. But on top of that, the cannons are able to just massively punish that Ancient Salamander. Man, that thing just got absolutely destroyed. And the whole idea was basically to have the Ancient Salamander hiding under the Quaddle to advance in pressure, which is a very great idea by Rubber Duck here. Very fun stuff, but... Uh, definitely was not expecting four gyro bombers here as they do pound into that quaddle. Brutal damage. I mean, this thing is just getting just mowed down. And did they buff the ammunition of these things? I feel like they got like more ammo than they had before. If that's the case, then I think we're going to be seeing super meta gyro bombers. But even if they do run out of ammo with their machine guns, there's going to be a restock. Uh, so here we have the main battle. The uh, lizards do advance on the flank. So the chameleon stalkers do ambush in the back, which is nice. This cannon's going to be shut down. The dwarf warriors are doing an okay job defending, but against red crested skinks and the flank. And all the sort of pressure, I do not see the artillery position holding for much longer. The cannon does go down, so a very nice boon here for the lizards who really, really need to get back in this game. But now the Royal Dawi Air Force is flying over. And what's really nice is you don't even have to micro those machine guns. They just shoot on their own. And the first bombardments dropped on the Razor Dons. More are definitely going to go down on these Saurus, I would imagine. A little bit of a swing and a miss, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit... There's four of them. It's a little bit tricky to get the proper positioning, but... Even without the bombardments, yeah, now we're getting Apocalypse Lizards as they're just getting bombarded here. Look at the, the quad of gyros. I love it. So Thoric is fighting here. He's going to be formidable against this big dinosaur. It looks like he's taking a little bit of friendly fire, or that was precursor ammunition. But the bombardment runs have continued. The other gyro bomber is on its way back, and the Master Engineers have just been kind of cackling in the trees, using their long rifles to shoot from a distance. Uh, they were able to snipe out the Razor Dons. 
and have been using restock on one another. So not even using restock on the uh, the gyro bombers, basically just using it on each other to keep that ammunition going. But yeah, kind of cool. Got to be careful though. If some like red crested skinks or something swarm them, they could potentially go down. But I think with the bombardments, like even if you surround a dwarven character, the gyro bombers are just going to absolutely just punish you. So here comes the flash bombs. Flash bombs going down on the chameleon stalkers and the sars, slowing them down by 60%, certainly buying quite a bit of time. And on the other side of the battlefield, the rubber duck going in for the kill on Thoric, which is a good play. It's a bit of a desperate situation for sure. So going for the goon on the Lord, you know, is pretty much the only bet that you have here. Thoric tanking it like a champ, though. Really good usage of the Master Rune negation, giving a very, very long term, because when you overcast it, it extends the duration. So that 40% ward save is huge. And you can see Thoric is actually going fisticuffs with the Red Crested Skink Chief. Uh, I'm pretty sure in a vacuum he would lose to the Skink Chief. But in this case, doing pretty well. Now, this is what's so good about the gyro bombers here, right? They can, like, if you try and surround them... Oh, God, the Skyhammer just dropping a huge hot payload here on the forces of the Lizards, nuking down the Chameleon Stalkers, both of them. And the Master Engineers, did they bring the Fiery Rings of Thori? They did not. But the Fiery Rings would be very, very devastating, too. And Master Engineers can be very durable if you surround them because of the Fiery Ring. But, yeah, more Bombardments coming down there. The Red Crested Skinks really having a pretty bad time, and that is going to be army losses as Thoric Ironbrow, with the support of the Gyro Bombers, is able to really dominate the Red Crest as King Chief. That was a super ridiculous game. Very fun. And that was one of those games that was very much won in the army selection screen. Uh, and, and yeah, like there was no, like there wasn't enough anti-air. There wasn't anything to really stop the Gyro Bombers. So they got to have free range. 1,500, 1,700, 2,600, and 1,100 on all the Gyro Bombers. Pretty crazy. Master Engineers didn't seem to get too much value. Maybe they were just kind of a little AFK in the trees there. I didn't, I didn't see, but so much damage was done so early. Like Salamander, Quaddle. Then the bombardments and the cannons, of course, killed the ancient salamanders. So that pretty much took out all the good things in the lizard army and just forced it to be a force of like red crested skinks. But yeah, Thoric beast as well. I mean, he tanked a lot of the lizard army and was uh, quite valuable for sure. But overall, that was uh, that was that was pretty hilarious. I, I enjoyed seeing. I enjoy a good old meme game like that every now and then. I'm kind of curious what current tournament rules say about gyro bombers. I think they're limited to two. I think you can have two tops. I don't think you can have more than that, but um, yeah, it's something I'll need to check. But uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Gyro builds in general are just going to be stronger. Like, you know, oftentimes gyros like brimstones and things like that run out of ammo, but having restock is so powerful. And dwarves can sit in a, in a box of elite infantry and really, really last an extremely long time. So being able to just sit there and restock and also get fiery rings of Thori on the attacking assets... Uh, I think, like, in general, when you play against Dwarves now, you always got to bring some air. If you're Beastmen, you need to bring two Harpies. If you're Lizardmen, you got to bring, like... I mean, there was a Quaddle, but you'd probably have to bring a couple uh, a couple of the Pterodons. So I'm trying to think, like... Well, I'm trying to think what factions... Let's actually jump over real quick and look. So GG, and make sure to check out a Rubber Duck of War if you haven't seen his YouTube channel. It's uh, quite awesome for sure. He's a great guy, great commentary, and great player as well. So let's go ahead and jump on over here and look at Custom Battles. So Beastmen have a good answer for the Gyros. Bretonia kind of does. I mean, I don't think you're going to be seeing Pegasus Knights. You might run into Royal Hippo Knights, which could be a little bit problematic. But the Dwarven um, Gyro Bombers, let's see here. Dwarven Gyro Bombers are, what's their speed? Yeah, 90 speed and they cost 1150. So, I mean, you know, if you go like double Gyro Bomber and like maybe like something like this against Bretonia, although you probably want steam because I feel like the Gyro Bombers will kill the cavalry with their miniguns. Steam cannons can like kill the archers, although archers against Bretonia, I don't know. Because you could do something like really nasty like this against Bretonia, I feel. Get like a couple, you know, these, and then you just get like oh man, I'm on like ultra funds right now. I was like, I was like, God damn, god damn, I'm rich. You guys get the idea. Um what other factions would really struggle? Dark elves. Dark elves, what can they bring? I mean, you can bring for anti-air, I feel like dark elves, yeah, you have harpies and, and manticores and things like that. So you're not gonna worry. Uh, won't work against Empire. Against Greenskins, I think you could actually see Gyro Cheese for sure, because Greenskins have already struggled against Gyro Cheese. And now that you can replenish the ammunition, I think it could be even stronger. So they have their Skirmish Cavalry, which now you don't need to worry about trading your Gyrocopter ammunition into Skirmish Cavalry because you can restock. So Gyro Cheese against Greenskins could be quite strong. High Elves, maybe. Um, a little bit risky. If they bring Larry with Tempest, which is, you know, they, they're going to bring Larry normally. And if you just bring Tempest as like a safety net, I think they're going to be fine. Lizards in general, I don't think it'll be super strong. I mean, in that game it was, but, um, you know, it was a quaddle build, so it was just like a fun build. But, yeah, there's a couple of factions. I think even against Gaven it might work, although, yeah, no, normally they bring like three or four Gisels. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble. A little bit of a gamble, but maybe a couple matchups in which it works. Probably more so against Chaos and against Greenskins. So those will probably be the ones where you see it being the most effective. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves, and uh, Apocalypse Dowie is upon us. Take care, my friends.